Hello, welcome to Radiant Resilience. I'm Tori. Today I am going to take you through a, uh, enti an entire trauma release yoga class. I've been getting a lot of requests for that, so I'm listening. Here you go. I also wanted to point out that on the YouTube channel Radiant Resilience, remember to subscribe, that I have a trauma release yoga playlist. There's not a lot there. There is a link to a YouTube video from Dr. David Berselli, the kind of developer of the trauma release work, uh, to his uh, set of seven exercises, as well as the activation sequence. So that's a resource you can use. I also have on that playlist a, uh, a video that just takes you through the activation sequence. Now there's kind of a long explanation at the beginning of that. So if you wanna just go to the five minute, 50 second mark, it'll just take you right into that sequence. And then I have another thing that you can try just to get the shaking, shifting uh, on there. And, and that's, that's just a real short sort of intervention that you could try while you're doing the shaking. I might be adding some more in the future, but right now we're just gonna go through an entire class. So if you are new to this trauma release yoga, what we will be doing is a short, 30, 35 minute practice, followed by shaking, which is known as self-induced thera therapeutic tremors. And those are the same, uh, same shaking mechanism that all mammals experience when they've had a stress response. And that is a way for us to kind of release the tension patterns in the body that we have from a stress response, as well as to kind of work through some of those stress hormones. Uh, when we do our yoga practice, we will be focusing on getting our legs and core a little bit fatigued. And the reason we're doing that is I'm wanting us to stretch out and fatigue the psoas muscle in particular. Now, this is a muscle that it's the only one that directly connects your spine to your legs. And anytime we have a stress response, that muscle contracts because it is getting us ready to fight, fight, or freeze. So it's getting us ready to do this or to run or to fight. That's why that's the first muscle that engages when you have a stress response. And then other muscles will get recruited as well but we're just kind of working at getting that muscle in particular fatigued to start the shaking and shaking usually kind of starts out as a muscle fatigue feeling, but then your nervous system kicks in and allows the shaking to happen. Uh, sometimes people get a little worried, like what if I do this and the floodgates are released and I can't stop it. And I like to just remind everybody, you've had your entire lifetime learning how to suppress this. Humans are the only mammals that really suppress this uh, self-healing mechanism just because of social uh, pressure, but you won't forget how to do that. You know how to do that. You've been doing that your whole life from when you were a little kid. So no, no worries there. The only mistake that you can do is to shake if, continue to shake if you don't feel comfortable. So if you're feeling tired or if something gets stirred up and you're uncomfortable or just feels weird to you and it's not a good weird, then you're gonna stop. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. As we move through the yoga portion of this, I've designed this particular class to get everybody to shake, but everybody's got a different level of fitness, a different type of practice. So let your practice meet you where you are. So if what I'm doing feels like it's just too much or maybe not enough, feel free to modify, skip, or add on if that is what you need. So you're gonna keep yourself safe and comfortable. And the big part of this that I wanna remind you of is there's that self-regulation aspect to the tremor release work. And that means you are gonna be checking in with yourself, staying present, staying safe, taking responsibility for your safety, and stopping if you're feeling too spaced out, if you're feeling uncomfortable, or if you're just getting really tired, okay? All right, having said that, we're gonna get started. You might want a knee pad. You might want a strap, or if you don't have a strap, you could always use a belt or a scarf. 
And then if you know you like to use blocks for lunges and that and forward bends, you'll have one of those hand at least one handy. And then also at the very end, we're going to do something with some elevation under our hips. Now you can do it without any elevation under the hips. You can use a block, you can use a knee pad, you could use a folded up blanket or towel too. All right, that's it. And now we're going to get going. So I'm going to invite you to come into your constructive rest pose. And that's lying down, knees bent, feet are on the floor. Your knees can be apart or they can prop each other up. And the arms are going to be comfortably away from your sides. Everybody's shoulders will have a different preference of exactly where you want your arms to be to be comfortable. Turn your palms up. And then we're going to take two great big sighs on your first side. Let your low back and your belly relax. So you're not pressing it down, you're just softening. And then on your second side, you're going to do the same thing for your shoulders. Just let them melt towards the floor. Now you might feel that you can lengthen the back of your neck out a bit more by moving the base of your head away from your shoulders. And then start to move into an easy belly breath, letting your belly rise and fall with the breath. And when your belly moves, that means your diaphragm is moving with the breath. And then interestingly, your diaphragm shares connective tissue with the psoas muscle. So this, in this position with the diaphragm moving, the psoas muscle can start to relax, release, and soften a bit. If you've been moving through your day in a stressed state, chances are that muscle has been contracted the whole time. And then you might expand your breath and you'll take the biggest breath you can take expanding in all directions without strain. And then release your breath, long, easy, and slow. Moving through one more full breath, followed by another sigh. <sighs> Breathe in. On your exhale, bring the knees up into your chest for a hug. And just give yourself a few, a few breaths right here to give your hips and your low back a chance to soften into this position. And then you'll either rock side to side or move your knees going in circles in the same direction. And your hands can guide the legs. If some, some, some of you might find to have your ankles crossed feels a little more comfortable. If you are rocking, you could move your knees closer or further from your chest. And if you're doing circles, go the other way now. All right, and then as you bring your knees back into the middle, Open them apart, circle them around, bring them back together. So your knees are moving in circles opposite directions from each other to move your hip joints, to get the hip joints moving and, and lubricated and then reverse your knee circles. All right, knees coming back into the middle. Bring your hands to the backs of the thighs, flex your feet, breathe in. On your exhale, reach your legs up towards the ceiling, inhale, bend. Exhale, lengthen, inhale, bend. And as you lengthen, push out through your heels and spread your toes out as much as you're able to. The next time you go long with your legs, reach the arms up to point and flex your feet and move through your wrists, palms up, palms down, spread the fingers and the toes out. And then make some soft fists with your hands, thumbs tucked in, rotate your ankles and your wrists. and rotate the other way. 
Flex the feet, spread your toes out, give your hands a shake. And then bring your hands to the backs of your thighs again, and you're gonna do, it's like you're cross country skiing on the ceiling with your feet. So pull one leg towards you as you push the other leg away and go back and forth with this. All right, and then reach legs back up. Bring your right knee into the chest, point your left toes. And now you're gonna keep your low back imprinting into the floor. Hands are on your right knee, push the knee away from you by lengthening the arms. And then bring your shin up to a tabletop and press your knee into your hands. So as you press knee into hands and you push the low back down, you'll feel your core engage. Take a breath in and as you exhale, lower your left leg just to about the height of your other foot. Probably not much lower than that. Inhale up. You might even go less than that. The idea is to just go to that area where you're feeling the core engage without lifting the low back. Lower down and up and down and up. The next time you lower the leg, we'll just pause there for a breath. And then bring the leg up, reach your right leg up and you're gonna switch your hands over to your left knee. Bend the left knee, shin is at a tabletop, low back down, left knee pushes into your hands. Breathe in, exhale, lower the right leg, just to about the other foot. Inhale up, exhale lower, and up. Continue. Now, as I, I mentioned in the activation sequence video, you don't have to do a yoga practice. If there is something, okay, lower the leg, if there's some other form of exercise that you prefer to get your legs fatigued, you can do that instead. All right, then as you release, let's bring the left knee into your chest. Right leg lengthens out on the floor, or if it's better on your back, bring the foot back to the floor. Take a sigh. And then set your left foot on the floor, bring right knee up. Maybe lengthen out your left leg and sigh again. And then reach both legs long, st arms stretch up over your head. Inhale, big full stretch. Exhale, relax to the floor. And then inhale, stretch out just your right side. Exhale, let it go. And then stretch out the left side. Let it go. And then the full body one more time. And release. Walking your feet back to the floor. Now this is where you might want to use your strap. If you don't have a strap or a belt, you can always just uh, use your hands to support your leg. I think the strap is a little nicer though. So you're gonna bring the strap around the ball of your right foot and keep the strap in your right hand. And then you're gonna open your right knee out to a butter, uh, happy baby position. Let your left knee fall open to a butterfly position. And then Lengthen out your left arm into a T position and look over your left shoulder. Take a breath or two here. And now you can stay here with your right leg in happy baby, or you might choose to lengthen your right leg all the way out into a straddle. Now we're gonna keep, um, we're gonna stay in this position, but on your inhale, lift your right leg up about four inches towards the ceiling, and then exhale, open it back out. Inhale, lift it. Exhale, lower. So you can do this with a straight or bent leg on the right side. Lift and lower. One more time. Lift and lower. Pause right here. Breathe in and out. And then slowly bring the right leg up. Bring the left knee back in. And we're going to release the strap. Place your right foot to the floor. Strap goes around the left foot. Open the left leg out to your happy baby. Open the right knee out to your butterfly. Right arm is out at a T. Look over your right shoulder. Take a breath or two here. And then you can decide whether you'd like to straighten out your left leg. Now we're gonna do that lift and lower on the left side. Inhale up about four inches. Exhale lower. Three more of those up and down, up down last one up and down and take a breath in and out 
bring the left leg up, bring your right knee in, release your strap, and then cross your right or your left ankle over your right thigh. From there, push the left thigh open, and when you do it, you're gonna do it up by your hip crease. Release that press, bring your arms down by your sides, turn palms up, shoulders press down, and then push your right foot into the floor. So you might not lift the hips, maybe it's the intention of lifting the hips. If you're able to, you'll bring hips up. And breathe right here, let your left knee just drop open as much as possible. And then release the hips down. Come into figure four, so your right foot can be on the floor, you can step it onto a block, or you can bring your hands or a strap around your right thigh, knee up towards your chest. And then rock side to side here with the legs. And you'll notice going one direction, you get more intensity in your left hip or glute. So then you're gonna find the right intensity, stop there and breathe. Good. As you release, cross your left thigh all the way over right thigh, knees to the chest. You can take this further by sliding your hands down towards your feet, giving the feet a little pull towards your shoulders. And then you can keep knees in close to your chest, or you might even do a little flow with this, moving the knees further away and bringing them back in. Just kind of feel whatever you feel in this particular pose. And as we move through all of our poses, everything's optional and you're never going into anything that's painful. All right. Okay, we're gonna release that side. Other side, cross your right ankle to your left thigh. Press your right thigh open up by your hip crease. And then bring arms down by your sides, palms up, shoulders down. Push your left foot into the floor, maybe intending to lift the hips or the hips come up. Breathe right there. Hips release down, figure four pose on this side, left foot on the floor or a block, or left knee up, hands or a strap around the thigh. Go side to side with your legs. And then find your stopping place and breathe right there. As you release, cross the right thigh all the way over left. Knees come into your chest. You can hold knees or slide hands further down, pulling the feet towards your shoulders. Now you can stay still in this position or you can do a little flow, knees away and knees back towards your chest. All right. As you release, uncross the legs, bring your feet to the floor. So we're gonna open our knees wider and then match so the ankles are the same width as your knees can go. Toes will angle out naturally. If you're forcing them to point forward, you might start to feel some twisting in your knee, which isn't great. So let your toes go out naturally. And then keep the knees as wide as your ankles, arms down by your sides, lift your way up into a wide bridge and hold here. So not only does this position help open the inner thigh, but it's getting into our outer glutes, medius and minimus. We want those areas to be strong for our hips and our back. One more breath in. And then exhale, slowly release down. Heel toe your feet into where it feels like a natural width for you. Arms come back out to a T position, breathe in. As you exhale, come into an easy twist. Head looks opposite the knees. Inhale, come up through center. Exhale, go to the other side. So you're gonna go side to side with this, timing it with your breath. Exhale to, into the twist. Inhale out of the twist. Let your movement last for the length of what part of the breath you're moving to. And now as you go into your next twist, stop right there. The arm you're looking towards, so your head is turned away from your knees, arm you're looking at, slide it up to the side of your head. Inhale, stretch out through that arm, and then same side, you might shift that hip in the opposite direction. Hold your, hold your stretch as you breathe. 
and then bring your arm back down to that T position and relax here with a sigh. And then back up through center, going to the other side. Come into your twist. Head looks away from the knees, the arm you're looking towards. Bring it up by the side of your head. Stretch out through that arm as far as you can. And then that same side, maybe move the hip in the opposite direction. Breathe deeply as you hold the stretch. And then arm comes back down to a T. Relax here with a sigh. <sighs> Inhale through center, exhale twist. So we'll just go side to side a few more times right here. And then come center, breathe in. On your exhale, hug your knees into your chest and do a little rock side to side. Okay, we're gonna roll to the side to bring ourselves into an upright position. As you come up, we're gonna lean back onto our hands so our spine is straight and we're not feeling any discomfort in the low back. Soles of the feet come together in front of you. You can decide how close or far you want your heels from your hips. You're gonna use your hands on the floor for a little bit of leverage. And just like we did cross country skiing on the ceiling with our feet, we're gonna do that with our sits bones. So one's gonna glide forward as the other glides back. Kind of what my hands are doing, but those are your sits bones. So as you're doing this, You'll feel some stretch in the groin inner thigh area. And while you're going back and forth with this, check if you feel one side is tighter than the other. If that's the case, you're gonna go to that side and hold it for a few breaths. If you're even, you can keep going side to side. I always have one side that's tighter. And then if you are holding it, go ahead and release and go side to side again. All right, from there, come center. We're gonna keep the left leg tucked in. Keep leaning back, lift your right leg. Toes are angled out, and then you're gonna breathe in, and as you exhale, push out through your heel, straightening the leg, inhale, bend. So you're trying to keep your heel at about the same height as you straighten and bend. This is a really good thigh strengthener, strengthening our quads down the center line as well as your inner and outer line. Now turn your toes straight up and do the same thing. Really good to keep quads strong for your knees. And you can do this same exercise sitting in a chair even. Okay, and then turn your toes inward. So now we're getting into that outer thigh. This one's always hard for me. We're also getting into a little muscle called the TFL, tensor fascia lata, that can feed into, that feeds into your IT band along with the glutes. Okay, last one. Ah, oh, and then just go ahead, set that leg down. Lean onto your left hand or your left elbow. Bring your right knee up. Hand slide down to the foot. Now, if you can't hold on to the foot, get a strap around the foot. And then we're gonna move the knee forward and back, just kind of flossing the quads, opening them up. All right, the next time the leg goes back, pause right there for a breath. Good, and then release. We're gonna come back up. Sorry, there's, okay. And then we're gonna do the other leg. Lean back, toes angle out, push out and in, out and in. Hmm. And you might notice your leg likes to go one direction more than the other. That just gives you information about your internal and external hip rotators. And then turn your toes straight up. Mine like to go out way more than they like to go in, in that rotation. Okay, now we're gonna turn the toes in, internal rotation. This is the one that's challenging for me, but everybody's different. <laughs> okay, last one. And then go ahead, set the leg down, lean onto the right hand or elbow, bring your left knee up, Slide your hand down to the foot and we'll thread the leg forward and back. And then go back for a breath or two. Okay, release that. We're gonna work our way up into our table position. So here's where if you need some extra padding under the knees, go ahead and get that set up. It's worth it to be comfortable. 
And if you know you like to use your blocks for lunges or anything like that, you can have those kind of set up by the front sides of your mat. Once you're in your table, lengthen your leg, right leg out, toes tuck under on the floor and push back through your heel. If you'd like, you could bring your left knee off the floor or you could lengthen your left leg out behind you with the foot off the floor. But the real focus is stretching through the back of your right leg. This is just a little extra if you want it. Then if you did lift the right knee, sorry, left knee, bring it back to the floor, lift your right foot up, breathe in, exhale, knee to the forehead, inhale, lengthen, knee in, and out one more time, in and out, good. Sweep your leg to the right, set the foot down, press the outside edge of the foot down, lift your arch, and then sit bones lengthen back as you sink your right hip towards the floor. Now you can stay up on your hands, you could also go down to the elbows, and you can stay still in this position or you might do a little forward and back rocking of your hips. Good, and then come back if you're rocking. If you're on your elbows, come back up to the hands. Sweep the leg out behind you. Let your toes touch lightly on the floor. Stretch your left arm forward. Now you might just keep the toes touching or you might lift the foot back up. And we're gonna do three big forceful long ha's to engage our core. So when you're ready, deep breath in. All the air out. Two more. Last one. Good. And then set your knee and hand down. And we'll do the other side. Stretch out your left leg. Toes under behind you. Push back through the heel. Right knee can come up. Right leg could lengthen. Or the knee can stay on the floor. Breathe here. Good. Right knee comes down if it's lifted. Left foot comes up. Breathe in. Exhale. Knee in. Inhale. Lengthen. Two more of those. In. Good. As you reach the leg long, we're going to sweep it out uh, to the left. Outside edge of the foot down, arch lifting, sit bones back, and then let your left hip just melt towards the floor. Staying on hands or going down to the elbows. Staying still or doing a little hip rock. All right, if you're rocking, come back. If you're on elbows, work back up to hands. And then sweep your leg back behind you, toes touch light to the floor while you stretch your right arm forward. And then you might feel that you can lift the left foot, and we'll do three more of those hops. Breathe in. All the air out. Inhale. One more. Good. Back to hands and knees. We'll do another little cat cow here. Breathe in, exhale, round, inhale, arch. One more, round and arch. And then back to neutral spine. Walk your hands forward. Go as wide with the hands as your shoulders need. Let your heart melt as the forehead comes to the floor. Hips are up in puppy pose. Arms stretching forward. Lift outside edges of the shoulder blades up. And you might come onto just your fingertips with your palms off the floor. And then ease your way back into your child's pose. Your knees can be narrow or wide, arms wherever feels good for them. You might do a little rocking right here. And if you are rocking, come back to center. Give yourself a sigh. Arms stretch forward, 
come back up to table and go through table into a plank. So you're on, you're going to stay on your knees for this plank. Push the back of your head up, lengthen out your tailbone, scoop in your navel. And now what I'd like you to do is without moving anything, just pull your hands and your knees towards each other. And as you're doing that, you'll feel more activation in the core. So not very much movement. It's just the action of dragging your hands and knees towards each other. Keep your tailbone long, navel in and up. Breathe right here. Good. And then release your way down to the floor. Arms down by your sides, palms facing down. Now we're going to engage our core again, and that includes our back to keep our back safe and stable. Lengthen tailbone. Scoop the navel in and up like you're zipping up a tight pair of pants, and then engage your glutes. If your brain doesn't find your glutes, give them a poke to help. And then we're going to lift the heart up, keeping all of that engaged. Arms come up. Palms down, or you could clasp. And then legs lift. You don't have to lift them high. Reach them long. Breathe in. As you exhale, feet together. Inhale, feet wide. Exhale together. And wide. One more time. Together. And wide. Good. And then come back to kind of a neutral leg. Bring your hands underneath your forehead as you relax down. Big sigh. Wiggle your hips side to side. Bend your knees, move your feet side to side. And then lengthen the legs back out, hands underneath shoulders. Press your way back up into your table. Let's do a little hip wag side to side. Exaggerate your shoulder movements to get a deeper side bend. Coming back to center, you could return to puppy pose like we were in just a moment ago, or you might lift up into a down dog now. If you come into down dog, do a little foot pedal first before you drop your heels to the floor. And, and they may not touch, that's okay, mine don't. And I've been doing this for 20 years. Deep breath in and out, and then Come into child's pose again. Big sigh right here. <sighs> All right, we're going to roll our way up or come back up to table. And then we're going to work into a rag doll. So tuck your toes under, go about mat width, and then walk your hands back to lift your knees. And then you're going to keep your knees nice and bent. If you're in rag doll, doesn't feel good for your back, you're going to do a, a supported forward half forward bend. Elbows or hands on thighs keeping your spine straight and you can let your head hang or you can hang all the way into ragdoll. Knees stay nice and bent. Maybe do a little swinging. And then come back to the center. Bring your hands to thighs. Shoulders move away from your ears so your neck is nice and long. And then shake your head no. Nod yes. Knees stay bent, let your head hang, hands help on this next part, deep breath in, exhale, press your hands to help you come up halfway with a flat back, take another breath in, and as you exhale, roll your way up, shoulders going up, back, down, inhale, arms stretch up, exhale, hands to heart, and sigh. Good, and then open the eyes, walk your feet underneath you. We're going to inhale, reach your arms up, interlace your fingers, index fingers pointing up. Now, if this doesn't work for your shoulders, you could do interlace fingers, palms up, or just have hands separate. And we're going to roll up onto the toes and lower down and roll up. And we'll lower down one more time. Come up. This one, we're going to give it a little longer. Ah. <laughs> and release down. And then we're going to step out a little bit wider. I'm going to turn forward so you can see better. We're going to keep the knees bent. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale, round over a big ball. Inhale, open. 
round again. Now we're gonna go to the side, open, go to the right, and open to the left. One more time each way like that, open, right, open, left. Now we're gonna add on, open center, go right, now roll your left shoulder open and let your arm sweep you to the center. Go left, right arm open and sweeps. Right, left shoulder opens and sweeps. Go left, right shoulder opens and sweeps. And then one more time in the middle. Round and open and release arms. Roll the shoulders so we're still at the back of our mat. Find your mountain pose. And then inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Now, if folding forward doesn't feel good, stop halfway instead. If you do go all the way down, come up halfway. Exhale, lower. Fingers reaching back. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, coming into chair pose. Weight goes back into the heels. Navel is pulling in and up. Open your collarbones. Back of the neck is long. Now, we're going to shift our weight to left foot. Light on the right toes. You're going to slide them out and in. So they're just grazing the floor. Out, in. Is the weight still in more in your heel of your standing leg? One more time. Out, in. Stay light on those toes. Push your left heel into the floor to straighten. And then you might lift your right knee all the way up. Breathe right here. Now push out through your right heel. Roll up onto your left toes and step forward. So you're on the ball of both feet. Now bend your knees. Straighten the legs. Shift your weight onto your right foot, hands to the right side. Step your left foot back, angle your toes out. Push your back heel down and then push down into your front thigh. While you're doing this, engage your left glute. All right, from there, bring your chest upright, hands to the fronts of your shoulders, breathe in. As you exhale, you're gonna push something heavy away from you. And then inhale, pull it back and straighten the front leg, lift your heart. Exhale, push, inhale, pull. And again, push and pull. Keep that front leg straight, bring your hands to the thigh right at the top. Push your right hip back, bring your left hip forward tiny bit, and then hinge forward with a straight spine. Now, some of you might be better off staying right here. If your back feels okay with it, you could drape over your front leg. Now we're gonna bend the front knee. You can either sweep all the way up, or if you need to, you can walk your hands onto that front thigh to help you come up and then arms sweep up. Sweep hands towards your back heel and tilt your torso to kind of line up with that back leg. Shoulders, pull, uh, blades pull in, palms are forward. Back of the neck is long. Now we're gonna push off our back foot to come into a warrior three. Push off, you might need to have your toes touching or you might be able to lift the foot. Back to table, or back to mountain. <laughs> Hands to the heart, take a sigh. All right, we're gonna do that same sequence on the other side. Inhale, sweep up. And exhale, fold down. Remember, you can go halfway instead. Inhale, halfway up. Lower down. Fingers reaching back. Inhale, all the way up. Back into your chair pose. Weight into the heels just a bit. Scoop in the navel, open collarbones. Now, weight into your right foot. Toes graze on the left foot. Slide out and in. Try to stabilize your standing leg. This side for me is a little more wobbly, but with awareness, I can get it a little more stable. Out and in, and then bring Left knee up to stork. 
push out through your left heel. Roll onto the right toes, step forward, balls of both feet. Bend your knees. Straighten. Weight goes into your left foot, bend your left knee, hands to the left thigh. Step your right foot back, angle toes out, heel presses down. And then press into your front thigh. And that just encourages our bone density. While you're here, we're gonna engage that right glute and then bring your chest up. Hands to the front of your shoulders. Breathe in, exhale, push. Inhale, pull. Push, pull. One more, push and pull. Keep that front leg straight. Bring your hands to the front top of your left thigh. Push that hip back. Bring your right one forward a tiny bit. Hinge forward. Straight spine. And then you can decide if it's wise for you to fold the rest of the way. Bend your front knee. You can walk your hands to your front thigh or sweep all the way up into your warrior one. Sweep your hands towards your back heel again, angle the body, tuck your chin, lengthen the back of the neck, push off your back foot, toes might touch or the foot might lift. Now we're gonna, our lifted foot, we're gonna keep it back and just step back into it and then turn to face the long edge of your mat. Open out your feet to the right width for you toes are forward for right now and then we're going to turn out the right toes bend your right knee to find your warrior two position reach your arms out into your T position breathe right here now reach arms up cup your elbows exhale on your inhale lean to your left exhale lean to the right Inhale left, exhale right, and then we're going to go left and pause there, breathe. Come upright, arms back out to your T. Hands to hips, straighten the right leg, push the ball of your right foot down into the floor, push your hips down to lengthen the waist, and then tilt to triangle. You can keep hands on hips or you might reach late arms long, breathe there. Now we're gonna have that bottom arm float. So if it's on the hip, you'll bring it down and then bend your right knee. Press your arm into your right thigh to press the thigh back slightly. And then ease your right elbow or hand to the thigh, stretch your left arm up by the side of your ear, little rotation of the heart towards the ceiling. Sweep your left arm down. Bring yourself back to your warrior two. Straighten the leg. Turn the toes forward and we'll do the other side. Left toes out, bend the knee, reach the arms out. Breathe right here. Arms come up, cup your elbows. Inhale to the right, exhale to the left. And go right and left. One more time, right and hold. Come back, warrior two. Bring your hands to your hips, straighten the left leg, ball the left foot down, push the hips down, little tilt. Hands can stay there or stretch the arms long. Okay, that bottom arm is going to reach down and float. Bend your left knee, arm presses the thigh back. And then ease your elbow or hand to the thigh. Stretch the other arm to the side of the ear. Rotate the heart towards the ceiling slightly. Sweep the arm down. Warrior two. 
and straighten. Toes turn forward, adjust your foot width again, and then we're gonna turn our, to turn our toes out. Inhale, reach up, exhale, lower down. Now you might lift your right heel, bring it down, left heel, bring it down, right, left, and then maybe both, up and down, up and down. Good. Hands to the insides of the knees. Push your knee hip or the thighs back. Chest goes forward. Dip one shoulder, look over the other. Then switch to the other side. Come back to the center. Ease your hands either down to the floor or you might grab a block. And also while you're here, maybe just put your knee pad back into the middle. And then we're going to straighten the left leg. Right knee stays bent. Hips go back, spine is straight. And then go to the other side. Good. Now we're gonna just walk our hands over to the left foot, turn the left toes forward, lift your back heel, and drop your back knee down. Bring your hands to your front leg, bring your chest up. So adjust your front foot to find your lunge. And then we're gonna lift or push the hips back, Tailbone long, or tailbone long, navel in and up, and then come forward. From there, reach your right arm up, left hand to the hip, and then reach to the left. Come back up, both arms come up, breathe here. Left hand back to your left knee, right hand goes down to the floor or a block. Now you can keep your back knee on the floor or you can lift the back knee up. You're gonna to twist to the left, maybe reach your left arm up. Left hand back to the knee, untwist, and now everybody tuck your back toes under and you're gonna lift and lower the knee a few times. Okay. After the knee is lifted, pause there, bring both hands to the floor. Maybe you need a little momentum. We're gonna push off our back foot and step it forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, lower down. And then we're gonna step left foot back. Knee comes down, release the back toes. And then we're gonna come all the way up. Tailbone long, navel in and up. Come forward into your lunge. Stretch, left arm up, right hand to the hip. Reach to the right. Coming center. Both arms up. Right hand back to the knee. Reach forward with your left arm and then sweep it all the way down to the block or the floor. Lengthen out through your spine. You might want to lift your back knee up or not. And then we're going to twist to the right. Maybe the right arm comes up. And then bring your right hand back to the knee. Back toes tuck under. Lift and lower your back knee a few times. Okay, so you can stop with the knee on the floor and then step back to a plank or you can stop with the knee lifted, or sorry, step back to a table or knee lifted, step back to a plank. If you came to your table first, then go to your plank, couple of breaths, and then down dog, puppy pose or child's pose. Good, and then we'll all meet back up to come to the floor. So we are going to, now remember I mentioned you might wanna do something with a little bit of a lifted hip, so you'll have your block handy if you're doing that. So we're gonna come onto our hands, lean back, bicycle the legs. And then release the feet, hands to the backs of your thighs. Roll your way down, knees to the chest, do a little rock. Okay, so set your feet down, find your prop. So if it's a block, it's gonna stay on its low height and go width-wise underneath your hips. You could also do just a real small lift, like a knee pad or a folded towel, or you can do this without a prop. 
So once you have your hips settled, just check if you need to adjust your prop up or down at all. And then bring your right knee back to your chest. You're gonna flex your left foot. Keep it active. Heel stays on the floor as you lengthen out your left leg, really pushing out through your heel. And once you're there, if you want, you can stretch your left arm up by the side of your head. So you're really stretching out through your heel to your fingers on your left side. Good. And then slide your left foot back to the floor, bring the knee in and we'll switch hands to the other, to the left leg, right foot down, foot flexed, heel on the floor, go long with your right leg. And then you might stretch the right arm up and really stretch out through your right side. Good, and then slide the foot down. Now, if your block is a dense block, like a cork or a wood block, this might feel too hard and you might have to get a little padding under it or come off the block. If it feels okay though, you're gonna bring your knees up to your chest, tailbone lifts up and that creates some pressure on the edge of your block at the top edge of your hips. If that feels good, you might even do a little rocking to massage that area. But if it doesn't, it's, don't do it, it's not worth it. Okay, and then come center, take a breath in and out. <sighs> and then ease the feet down, move your block out, hips come down, oh, just where we started, constructive rest pose, take a thigh. <sighs> And then maybe a few little side to side twists. Okay, so now we are going to get ready for the shaking portion of this. So if you need a little bit of extra padding underneath you, a blanket or a pillow, or if you need to put on more clothes, because oftentimes as you relax, your body temperature will lower and you'll feel cold. This is the time to get that all set up. So you might even wanna just hit pause and get yourself situated before you start the shaking. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna shift my camera a little bit so that you can see me just a little bit better. So I'm gonna just shift forward. Okay. I think that's probably pretty good. Okay. So I'm gonna take you through the activation sequence really quick. You're just gonna watch so you know where we're going with this and then um, I'll, I'll walk you through it real time. So we'll start on the back and you have two options here. The first one is a butterfly position and, and I recommend not going into your widest butterfly. Oftentimes people will feel some tugging on the inner knee. So just a little less than what widest is, and then you'll lift the hips up. You don't have to lift them up very high. That's option one. Option two, if you don't like the first option, is to come into a bridge. If you choose bridge, one thing you can do is to squeeze the block between your knees. So either one of those options, you'll be there for a minute, and then by then, after that, I mean, I'll have you come into a relaxed butterfly sigh right there. Then I'm gonna have you move your feet forward just an inch or two, just a little bit away from your hips. From here on out, your hips stay on the floor and we're just gonna lift the knees about, about an inch and I'll have you stay there for a minute. I'll lift, then you'll lift another inch for another minute and a third time, an inch for a minute. By then, like my shaking is going. If you need a little extra fatiguing to get that shaking happening, you'll stay in this position a little longer. Usually people are shaking by then. And then it once you come into that shaking, then you're gonna shift your feet flat to the floor so that you're not using muscle engagement to hold your legs up. And that allows the shaking to really kick in. And that's all. You're just gonna hang out and let it happen. If at any point you start to feel uncomfortable or tired or you know just whatever, it just doesn't feel good you're, or spacey, you're going to take a break. You can take a break a couple of ways. You can lengthen out your legs and flex your feet. Or my favorite is to give my knees a hug. And after you've taken a break, you might 
find that that's enough for you for today. Remember, self, self-regulation, self you're going to stop when you need to. If you take a break and you feel like you could go a little further more, then you're just going to go right back into that shaking position and your body will pick right back up. That is it. Now I'm going to take you through it real time. So go ahead and come down to the floor. Actually, I'm going to move my clock so I can see you see the second hand better. Come down to the floor and while you're doing that, decide if you want to start out in that lifted butterfly position or bridge position with or without the block between the knees. So when you're ready, come up, hips come up, and you're going to be here for about a minute. And a minute can feel long here. So if it's too much for you, you're going to rest and come back up when you need to. You might already be feeling some shaking or swaying or bouncing. You can see my legs are kind of swaying. Uh, that's just things getting started. If you're not feeling that, don't worry. We're not done, so we'll get there. And breathe. And your eyes can be open or closed. Okay, we're almost there. My body is really ready to shake right now. <laughs> All right, so let your hips come down, let your knees open out into that butterfly position and just give yourself a big sigh. Now, hips stay on the floor, just slide your feet a couple inches away from your hips. Hips stay down, bring the knees up an inch and you're gonna be here for a minute. And while you're here, I'm going to ask you not to press anything down, but to just sigh and relax your low back and your belly. <sighs> so oftentimes we have all those social pressures to keep our core tight and sucked in. This is the time where you're just going to let it be as relaxed as possible. Now, um, Sometimes the activation sequence that we're doing right now, this is where the activation sequence started with that lifted butterfly. For some people, it's a little too activating and it's just too much for them and they can just go right into the shaking. So if that's you, feel free to just put your feet flat on the floor, knees bent, and just allow yourself to shake. Okay, bring your knees up another inch. And this time I'm going to have you sigh, focusing on releasing everything from your waist to your neck, your chest, your shoulders, your rib cage, your arms and fingers. And everybody's shaking looks different and everybody, and it can look different from session to session. Usually it starts in the legs, but it can travel anywhere in your body that your system is ready to let go of. And sometimes movement will be really big and sometimes it's so subtle, but feels deep in the body. And either one is right. There's no wrong to this. Okay, bring your knees up another inch. They're all of equal value. It's just what your body's ready to let go of. All right, and we're going to take another sigh, this time focusing everything from the neck up. Relax your forehead, your brow, your eyelids. Relax your lips, your tongue, and your jaw. And sometimes... Our shaking doesn't look like shaking. Sometimes it looks like rocking or swishing or bouncing or rolling. If that's how your body wants to move and you're comfortable with it, you can let it happen. And you can see my shoulders want to go just a little bit. So once I have you 
in that shaking position, I'm just going to come up to seated so that I can still talk to you. Okay. All right. So if you're not getting enough vibration or you're worried that it's going to stop, you can stay here a little longer to get a little more muscle, muscle fatigue. But if you think things are going pretty good, you're going to shift your, your feet flat to the floor and just let things happen. Sometimes when you do that little shift, things might settle. If that's the case, take a great big sigh or two. <sighs> and then you, usually it will come back in. If it doesn't, you can go back to that high butterfly for a little longer. So that's it. And then you just let yourself shake however you want to. And I'm going to be guiding you through. So you're just going to let this happen. If at any point you're uncomfortable, tired, or feeling like you're getting too spaced out, or sometimes uh, an emotion or memory can bubble up, if it's comfortable, you can just go with it. If it's not, you're going to take a break by lengthening out your legs, flexing the feet, or giving your knees a hug. Okay, let's take another sigh. And then I'm gonna invite you to do a little release of the jaw. So we're gonna do three what I call horse lips breaths, where you lick your lips and then you blow your air out through your lips. And that helps relax your jaw. And then we're going to give it a stretch by mouthing the word wow as big as you can three times. So lick your lips. Inhale, blow your breath out. One more. And then mouth the word wow three times. Wow. 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 And then when you're done, sometimes a yawn will creep in, let that happen. But when you finish, keep some space between your upper and lower teeth so that you're not tempted to clench into the jaw at all. And then check in. How are you feeling? Are you still feeling okay? Still feeling comfortable. If that's the case and you want to continue, feel free to do that. If not, you're going to go into taking a break. And I'm just going to have a shake for maybe, I don't know, seven to ten more minutes. <sighs> Let's take another sigh. <sighs> Sighs are really good for also releasing tension patterns in the body and just down-regulating our nervous system in general. Hmm. And check in. You might find that as things release that you want to shift. Maybe you want to shift your arms into a different place. Or maybe you want to shift your feet slightly. Everybody has kind of a position of the feet that feels the most comfortable for them and still allows the shaking to continue. Sometimes laughter bubbles up, which is always kind of fun. Um, and that's, that's kind of cool because your laughter is shaking your diaphragm. Let's take another side. <sighs> and I mentioned that you want to stay present. If you at all start to feel spacey, a good gauge for you is you should be able to open your eyes like I'm doing and have a conversation with somebody. If that isn't feeling possible, then try blinking your eyes or keeping your eyes open for a bit. And if that doesn't take care of it, then you're going to give yourself a break. And in fact, I'm going to invite all of us to take a quick break right now by bringing the knees into your chest. Uh, 
maybe doing a little rocking. This just gives us a little space, gives us some space to check in with how things feel. And then you can be a little more aware of whether it's right for you to return for a little more shaking or whether you're ready to go into your final relaxation, your Shavasana. <clears throat> so if you're ready for Shavasana and you want to do a little bit of stretching first, do that. If you're ready to return to your shaking at any point, you can just set the feet back down and let it happen. Let's do another sigh. <sighs> Sometimes when you take a break and you return to the shaking, your sh vibration pattern can shift sometimes. Well, it's just kind of an interesting thing to notice. <sighs> Sigh anytime you want. And we just have a couple more minutes to shake. And check in again. How are you feeling? If the answer is anything other than comfortable and good, you're going to transition out of the shaking. Checking in again, any spot that you can shift or adjust for comfort. And is there any spot that you feel some tension has crept in? And if that's the case, take another side and see if you can release or soften it a bit. <sighs> so with that side, my shaking vibration did a big shift. And again, you're not going to judge whatever is happening with your movement. You're just allowing it to unfold organically. One more sigh. <sighs> okay, we are getting ready to transition out of the tremors and into our rest or Shavasana. So you have the option of lengthening out your legs, flexing your feet to make it stop right away, or you can let your legs be relaxed and it'll fade out. Or if you prefer that hugging in of your knees, you can do that as well. So take some time. Once your shaking has stopped, if you're feeling the need to do a little moving or stretching, a lot of times people feel like they need to just do a little stretch. If that's the case, take your time, allow yourself to do whatever stretching or organic movement that you want. And then you're gonna set yourself up to be as comfortable as possible to rest. So, we, um, you know, it could be a Shavasana like what I'm doing. If that's not comfortable, come into what feels comfortable for you. You could have your knees bent, you could be over on your side. Uh, make sure you're warm enough, you have enough padding, blankets, whatever you need. And then once you're all set up and comfortable, you're gonna take two or three more sides. And as you're settling in, 
relax, release, surrender, and just allow. And this rest at the end of your self-induced therapeutic tremors is very important. It helps ground the system. It helps us, it allows us to rest and recharge because you've expended a fair amount of energy in that shaking. And it also gives the system time to integrate the, the effects of your tremors. So you want to always, when you're doing this on your own, give yourself that integration, rest, and grounding time. Allowing everything to just let go. Nothing to do but be here in this moment, cultivating the art of doing nothing. Okay, breathe into your belly. Relax the breath out. Breathe in belly, low ribs. Let it go. Breathe in belly, ribs, upper breath, biggest breath you can take. And let it go. Now, if you're needing a little longer rest, of course, feel free to stay where you are. Otherwise, you can start to bring some movement into hands and feet, into the rest of your body, nice and gentle. And just taking an easy, slow transition. When you feel ready, roll onto your side. And when you get there, move through another side. And same as, as before, if you're feeling like you need a little longer time here, stay there. Otherwise, with as little effort as possible, bring yourself up into a seated position. Maybe keep your eyes closed 
or slightly downcast at first as you're transitioning back into that upright position. And then roll your shoulders up, back, and around. And then roll the shoulders separate. Let your ribs move too. Good. And then on your next inhale, shrug the shoulders up. Exhale, drop them down. Do that again. Inhale, shrug. Exhale, release them down. And then drop your chin down to your chest. Give yourself a sigh right here. And let's slide your chin over to your collarbone on one side. And go through the center into your other collarbone. Back down center, now roll your shoulder, your head over to your shoulder, forward and to your other shoulder. Keep going a few times here. Hmm. All right, and then as you bring your head off to your right shoulder, stop there, do a little head nod. Hmm. And then pause and take a sigh. <sighs> Now take your right arm up and over. So you're creating just a little weight there. Take your left arm, wrap it around your rib cage. And then you're very gently pulling your head to the right and your rib cage to the left. Press your tongue into the roof of your mouth. Forehead is relaxed, but turn your eyes upward and breathe. Good. And then keep your head to the side as you release your arms down. Roll your head forward into your other shoulder. So now you're on your left side. Do a few little head nods. And then stop and sigh. And then bring your left arm up and over. Right arm hugs the ribs. Pull the head gently left and the ribs gently right. Tongue to the roof of the mouth. Relax forehead. Turn your eyes upward. Breathe. Release your hands down, roll your head forward, chin to the chest, breathe in. As you exhale, bring your head upright. And then we're gonna find that little spot, find your collarbones, and then just above your collarbones and to slightly to the side of the inner pokey part of your collarbone. You're just gonna press inward and slightly downward behind the collarbone, above and behind. And just press right there, taking a few breaths. So. We're just doing a little vagus nerve, vagal uh, nerve stimulation. Couple of deep breaths right here. Checking in with how you're feeling. If you're new to this practice, a couple of things you should know. You're um, only going to shake as long as you're comfortable. Never shake longer than a 20 minute time period, at least initially while your system is figuring out what it likes. Okay, release that and just do a little uh, so, uh, soft fist tapping right here on your breastbone. It's also good for your immune system. Uh, so shaking no longer than 20 minutes in one go and start off doing this two to three times a week so that you have some time for integration in between sessions. Uh, sometimes if you have a lot of old stored stuff, Okay, and then relax the hands, roll the shoulders back, take one more big sigh. And when you, so sometimes if you have some old stored stuff that comes up and your shaking gets really intense really fast or you get overwhelmed quickly, you might only want to shake for a minute or two and then stop. But you, um, so that self-regulation aspect of this is very, very important. Um, also, just notice how this affects you. Sometimes people will feel energized, and sometimes people will feel a little bit sleepy. So if you know how your system responds to this, you can time it to the right place in your day so that you don't mess up your sleep or sabotage what you have going on throughout your day. If you feel really extreme one to the other, it nothing wrong it just probably means that you shook a little longer than what your system was ready for on that particular day sometimes you don't feel anything you just feel good after you know and you don't notice sleepy or energized so just kind of notice how you respond if you're feeling a little bit um 
energized or a little bit worked up, do some grounding technique, you know, massage the feet, take a bath, get outside. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I should tell you. Oh, the other thing is, is uh, occasionally people will say that they like their low back gets sore afterwards or something gets sore. Uh, and I always try to tell people, don't be alarmed by that. Oftentimes when we have old holding patterns, uh, especially patterns that are a result of pain, because when we have pain, we tend to guard and, and contract around that pain as a guarding, protecting thing. So sometimes when you shake, you can release some of those old holding patterns, which might cause a little bit of soreness, but it won't last and you haven't hurt yourself. Uh, the only other thing I want to tell you is there, as far as studies go, you can, um, the recommendation is to not do this with while pregnant, although uh, there are people who have done that and there haven't been any contraindications. It just uh, has not been studied. So I just wanted to throw that in there and always keep yourself safe. Reach out to me if you have any concerns or questions and I will answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, check out the playlist. I'm going to post a link to the playlist up in the corner. And I also teach this class live online once a month on Fridays. Usually it's the first Friday of the month unless I have something going on that, that um, I have to shift it to the next Friday. But you can sign up for that on my website, radiantresilience.com. And it's very affordable, very accessible. I think that's it. I really appreciate you. Give yourself a little pat on the back for being adventurous and trying something new. And we're going to close out our practice. Bring your arms down by your sides. Inhale, sweep arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Take a great big breath in. And as you exhale, drop your chin down to your chest, turning your gaze towards your heart center. And thank yourself for your practice for doing a little self-care and self-healing. And I appreciate you for allowing me to share it with you and for your trust. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.